Um, this is a video that I always make when I start a new class. I make a ba make a basics video, and in that I speak about the threads I use and the needles I use, etc. Um, so I've got a new class starting soon, and I need to make it for them. And I thought I'll make it for you as well. It's a win-win because I always have to remake it because every time I make it, I speak about something that's current. So if I was using the one in the next class from three years ago, people would think, "What's she talking about?" Because it would be things were said will be said it pertaining to what's going on anyway so I always have to make it again because my mouth runs away with me right so threads I almost always exclusively use cotton abroader white okay now there's two whites there's Blanc B-L-A-N-C and there's B5200 which is what this is the Blanc is more matte this is has a, a more but it's brighter this B5200 one. So that's cotton abroad and it's size 16. It comes in different sizes. The higher the number, the thinner the thread. Um, so I use 16 and to me this is equivalent to two strands of stranded cotton. Um, but it's just one strand, single stranded. You just thread it through your needle like that. And it's so beautiful to work with. It's a really soft wool. So that's, I mean, you can tell by this, I use a lot of this. Um, almost exclusively what I use all the time. This is stranded cotton, which I do use sometimes. You can get colours in this as well, by the way, in Cotton Abroad. Have a look um, online. It's quite a lot of different colours you can get. Some colours are only available in the higher numbers, which are very fine, and I don't necessarily like working with those. This is stranded cotton, your DMC and your anchor. I use that um, sometimes if I want a bit of colour. You can get cotton pearl, which is a very high twist highly twisted threads and you would just use one strand of this hardly ever use it hardly hardly ever use it and um, sometimes it's good if you've got say a big area of French knots in the cotton abroader and you want to add a little bit of unexpected shine or texture in there then white cotton pearl is a good option for that you can get this on little balls as well but I don't have any so I very rarely use that very rarely use that and then you can get silk threads, some here, which I hardly ever use as well. These are wound on like little cardboard tubes because you need the smoothest hands in the history of the world to use that. If you've got any kind of rough skin, then it just snags and it's a nightmare. So that's silk thread, and you can get silk thread on a reel as well, depending on how much you buy. That's silk thread for a project I was doing quite some time ago now, actually. Um, so, and then there's this. Um, this is actually knitting yarn I think, it's DMC Petra and it's either knitting or crochet. Now I use this for covering little balls and things, if I make little ball buttons it's thicker than the cotton abroad and the stranded cotton so it's really useful for things like that. So I do use that a lot. Um, when I was studying I was making, I was cross stitching on meters and meters of silk and this is what I used because it it covered better um, rather than doing it with broader or something it would take me like 20 years but with that it just covered it a lot better and then this is what I use on my machine this is Gutterman 100% cotton um, I always use this on my machine and very extravagantly I know I use it for basting and tacking as well because you can buy tacking thread and this is it but I don't like it. It's got slubs in it and it's like so it's obviously like the cheaper version of thread. And it, I don't just sort of like the way the slubs catch and it gives off fluff and stuff. So a very rare I've, that's just well you can see I hardly use that. But this is what I use for basting and tacking as well. Um but you've gotta we all learn what we're comfortable with, don't we? Um so what else have I got here? Then needles. I use let me just put so many needles in here. Get them out. Right, Milner's needles. I use a lot of Milner's needles uh, and I bend them regularly, so I have to change them regularly. I'll show you in my needle case actually. Um, look at this one. Look how bent that is, can you see? Maybe you can't see it against the white. It's on there now. Where is it? There. 
They're really bent. They bend so easily when you're doing masses and masses of bullion loops. So I change them regularly. I use a lot of Milner's needles. So they're what you use for bullion loops. And the reason you use those is because the eye is the same width as the point. So when you're pulling your needle through all the wraps, it comes through seamlessly. And then, embroidery needles, obviously, sharps. Just no particular size. I'm a bit ignorant of sizes, if I'm perfectly honest with you. They don't really mean anything to me. I just like a needle that's comfortable in my hand that the eye is big enough to take the thread I'm using and that the point is sharp enough to pierce the fabric that I want to stitch into. So, embroidery needles. These are John James. You can buy embroidery needles in supermarkets. They're, to me, they're just as good. They probably don't last as long, but there's nothing wrong with them. I, you know, I've used them as well. Um, and then I always have some of these bodkins, uh, which are like really big eyes, you know, like for darning and stuff, because they're always useful. They're even useful for scoring paper if you're making books. And then, I'll get one out of here, blunt cross-stitch needles. Blunt cross-stitch needles. So these are fabulous for doing things that need to be woven. So it's like a web stitch where you're weaving in and out of threads. You don't want a sharp point that's going to shred your thread. So these blunt needle, blunt tipped cross stitch needles are perfect for that. Um, so I always have those, I've got some of those. Now in terms of scissors, I have so many scissors and I have like, there's only two of us living in this house, but for some reason, and we're both adults allegedly, people use my scissors for things they shouldn't use them for. So this is an old pair of embroidery scissors that wouldn't cut butter. And they've got, because they've been abused by somebody, and it wasn't me, honestly, so we've got a bit of masking tape on the thing there, so I know these are the rubbish ones. So I use these for everything now, paper, if I've got like, I've got some trim that's got sequins in it, so if I cut that and there's a chance the blades are going to cut through a sequin, I use these. I call these my scissors that can be abused. And then my other ones that people have been warned on pain of death using. Um, so these are for thread. Don't ever, 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 ever cut anything apart from thread or fabric with your fabric and embroidery scissors. Just don't ever do it. So, and then fabric scissors, don't let anybody near them. In fact, you can buy a lock, but I'm not going to buy a padlock for them. And just ordinary paper scissors. So they're the tools of my trade. So I thought I would just share that with you because I need to make this video anyway for the new class. So I may as well use it here as well for a post, so it's a win-win. I don't think I've left anything out. And these are, I mean, these are amazing, I love these, but it's not essential. It's a sewing gauge. Um, so you can check the distance between things to make sure things are straight, etc. And I don't have anything on the table to use to show you, but I would invest in one of these just so that you can fiddle with it while you're watching telly. So that is my basic toolkit. And of course an embroidery hoop, which I don't have with me, um, but you all know what they are. Okay.